Hello, my name's Gary Sims from Android Authority. Back in 2012, the release of the Raspberry Pi started a whole new revolution, something similar to the home computer revolution that we experienced in the 1980s. Not only was this small board a fully functioning computer, it also had a set of GPIO pins that allowed different circuits and robots and all kinds of things to be built. And on top of that, it only cost $35. And now here we are a few years later, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation have now released the Raspberry Pi 2. So let's take a look at it. Okay, let's just spend a few moments looking at the Raspberry Pi itself. As you can see, it's a nice small board, the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 1. Going around the ports here, here we can see the micro USB port for the power. Here is the HDMI video connector. Here is the Raspberry Pi camera module connector, audio. Going around onto this side, we can see ethernet for USB ports. And then also here at the back are the 40 GPIO pins, which we'll talk about a little later. Here is the Broadcom uh, uh, SOC system on a chip, which includes the GPU and the CPU, four Cortex uh, A7 cores. And then when we look around here on the back, we can see the micro USD card. And here is a Raspberry Pi Model B, Raspberry Pi 1 Model B, next to a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. We can see some of the big difference here. The model, the original Model B only had uh, had less GPIO pins. This one has 40. There, of course, here was the SD card rather than the micro SD card. Then, of course, the processor is very different. Both Broadcom chips. Broadcom has done an excellent job in making these chips for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This one was only based on the ARM V6 architecture, single core running at 900 megahertz. This, of course, is based on the ARM V7 architecture, Cortex A7, again, also running at 900 megahertz, but it's a quad core. The other difference, as you can see, uh, is that this one has uh, two USB ports. The Model B Plus had four. This one has four as well. So more power, more memory, micro SD card, more pins, but the same form factor. Like the Raspberry Pi 1, the Pi 2 can run a variety of Linux distributions. The easiest way to install an OS for the Pi is to use the new out-of-the-box software package, or Noobs for short. It boots the Pi and then allows you to pick which operating system you want to install. You can even install multiple operating systems and dual boot via a boot menu. So I've just booted up the uh, new out-of-the-box software distribution that you can download from the Raspberry Pi website. It boots up and gives you a menu that allows you to choose all the different uh, Linux versions that can run on the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, the first one, the first one based on Debian Wheezy is the recommended one, but there's also, for example, OpenELEC for the Raspberry Pi 1 and for the Raspberry Pi 2. There are some other ones here. Most of these only support the Raspberry Pi 1. However, these initial ones here at the top all support the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi 2. To install it, you just click on it, hit the install button, and after you've confirmed it, it will just start to download it onto the micro SD card. After it's completed, it will boot up into the new operating system. Very simple, very easy to get yourself up and running on the Raspberry Pi 2. Now, one of the big announcements that was made at the time of the launch of the Raspberry Pi 2 was that Microsoft will be releasing a version of Windows 10 for the Raspberry Pi 2. This release of Windows 10 will be free through its Windows Developer Program for IoT. What yet isn't known, however, is what will be included in this free version of Windows 10. It will obviously be a cut down version, but how cut down remains to be seen. There is one major operating system that unfortunately is not supported by the Raspberry Pi 2, and that's Android. The Raspberry Pi 1 didn't support it, and at the moment it doesn't seem like that will change for the Raspberry Pi 2. The Raspberry Pi Foundation doesn't see Android as a priority, and there appears to be some porting difficulty due to some missing drivers from Broadcom. However, of course, this could all change. Just like the Raspberry Pi 1, the Raspberry Pi 2 is supported by OpenELEC. Soon after the Raspberry Pi 2 was announced, the OpenELEC project released a new build which supports the Raspberry Pi 2. Here it is running, booted up on my Raspberry Pi 2. I'm also using a remote control on my Android smartphone that I downloaded from Google Play. And as you can see, it absolutely works absolutely fine. And if we go here down to the system settings, I want to see to show you that the system is running at uh, 1920 by 1080 at a full screen and that's roughly around 30 frames per second it's managing. 
Okay, to test out the video playback capabilities of the Raspberry Pi 2 using OpenELEC, I've got two video files here. Both are video files that are produced by my video editing software, and I, therefore I'm able to control the bitrate. One is at around 4.5 megabits, the other one is at 15 megabits. So let's go ahead and see how they go. We'll go with the slower one first of all, 4.5 megabits. Just give that going. Okay, that seems to play fine. But as I experienced on other occasions, the mouse does jump around when you're trying to move it. However, the controls are still usable, and I can press pause, I can jump forward to other places, and that all seems to work without any problem. Okay, let's go back and try the other one now at 12, 15, sorry, and a half, 15 uh, megabits per second. Let's start that now. And that's running as well. But again, the same thing. The mouse does jump around a bit, however it is still usable if you just let the mouse gently go to the places you want it to go to. One of the attractions of the Raspberry Pi, and in fact other SBCs, is the ability to connect hardware, LEDs, motors, servos, sensors, etc. directly to the board and control monitor that hardware from within a computer program. The advantage of the Pi over a microcontroller board like the Arduino or the Embed is that the general purpose input output pins, GPIO pins, can be controlled from a variety of programming languages and not just C or C++. Here's a quick look at how you make an LED flash on and off using a Raspberry Pi. Okay, besides the Raspberry Pi, you're going to need a few little bits of equipment to make this easy. The first is a solderless breadboard. You can get these off eBay, you can get them from sites like Banggood. Okay, and that's going to be our base where we build the small circuit. We're going to need, of course, <clears throat> an LED that we need there. We're going to need a resistor, something around 220 ohms, maybe 270 ohms, and a couple of cables. These particular cables have uh, the connector that can go onto the Raspberry Pi and the pin that can go into the breadboard. Now, building these circuits is quite simple. First of all, you need to take the LED. Notice that the LED has got one leg longer than the other. You put the longer leg towards the positive. So I'm going to stick this here in row 25 and 24. Okay, we take the positive connected to that pin and we're going to put it around here onto the pin on the Raspberry Pi. One, three, five, seven. Pin seven there. Okay. Then we take the resistor that comes out of the LED and we just put it in any other space there that makes it fit naturally. And then we're going to go from the end of the resistor into pin nine, which is ground on this GPIO circuit. Okay, and that's it. There's the circuit board. And now all we have to do is use some programming to make that light uh, LED flash on and off. Okay, so I've connected up everything to the Raspberry Pi, the power, the video cable, the Ethernet, mouse and keyboard. I've booted it up. It's running Linux now. And I'm running a small Python script that controls this GPIO pin number seven, causes current to go down it, through the LED, through the resistor, and back through down to ground. And as you can see, the LED is flashing. You get full instructions in the written companion. Please check that out, and you'll find out how to write this program fully. But as you can see, just not very much money. We have a fully working computer, a very simple circuit that even a child, a young adult, a teenager, anybody could have a look at and learn about electronics and computing. And it's quite very practical, very hands-on. So there it is, the $35 Raspberry Pi 2. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to write some comments below. Tell me what you think about the Raspberry Pi 2. Tell me how you think it compares to other single board computers. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. And also, you can follow me on Google+. And I'll see you in my next video.